Alrighty. Good morning, and welcome back to day two with welcome Lauren back. Waters. Yes. How are you? I'm doing very well. How awesome. are you? I'm doing wonderful. Um, how Good was yesterday for you? Yesterday was a lot of fun. I think we got a lot of work done, and I'm excited to continue with that today. Yeah, so hopefully we can start out and do a little bit of a recap. Um, there's a couple particulars. So we do have the Chat to Win Challenge, um, so that we'll pick a winner probably within the next half hour. Um, and then we also have a XD Daily Challenge today, so you can find out more about the details there in the Challenge tab. Uh, we provided a, another UI kit uh, called Hidden Treasures for you to take a look at. Um, you might be a little bit overwhelmed just by all the content in there. There's quite a few examples. Um, but really the ask is just to pick two screens, um, use what's available there. They're great, great, great resources. Um, so yeah, just try to pick something that you feel really strongly about. Um, I think the, the goal is to create a fashion blog, um, which should be a lot of fun. That's a really, really great use case to use wonderful imagery yeah. and uh, kind of have a lot of fun with just the overall style. So we're really looking forward to seeing your submissions. If you didn't get a chance to submit in the last round, definitely carry it over to this round. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. We did a lot of work yesterday. We did. I mean, you did a lot of work. I, I just kind of <laughs> hung out and answered some questions. Yeah. And stuff. I'm proud of myself. Yeah, you should be. Just kidding. Yeah. No, you did really, really well. It was wonderful. Um, you took us through some wireframes. Obviously, I'd love to let you tell us a little bit more about what your project was and what you're, uh, okay. what you're working on. And then, um, yeah, we can get started. I'm excited. Okay. Um, so. Just a recap of what I did yesterday. I was uh, redesigning the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust website, which is a little bit outdated. And I started with the home page and then uh, transferred that over, over to a mobile app screen for the home page. And then I, I did the orphan bio page and also did the mobile version of that. So today, day two, we're going to be finishing up That's wireframes awesome. and then we're going to start to look at inspiration for UI, which is going to be really fun. So colors, gradients, fonts, any decorative elements, and then starting on the designing for the UI screens. Awesome. So what's your favorite part? I mean, do you, I think somebody asked yesterday whether or not you spend more time wireframing or actually doing interface design, but do you, do you particularly enjoy one over the other? I think you mentioned visual design yesterday, right? I do enjoy visual yeah. design, although <laughs> I know how important wireframing is, so I, I still spend a good amount of time on wireframing. I think that's so important just to get everything you need on your screens and not miss any elements, so. Awesome. And yeah. you you did all this without any internet yesterday. I did, and I have internet today. <laughs> yes. I'm so excited. We did it. Yeah, that's so. I think yeah. I shared with you, but that would have totally overwhelmed me just because I, I use resources so often. Right. So, I know. Uh, there were things I wanted to show you guys, but I can do that today. Big so. props for Lauren. Um, let's say hi to a few people. Looks like Blanca, you're joining us today. Jason, thanks for saying hi. <clears throat> Ash, thanks for welcoming everybody. Um, please let us know where you're from. Uh, sometimes let us know, you know, even what time it is. We, we get a mix of everybody. It can be early evening. It mm -hmm. can be late in the evening. Um, some people are just starting work. Um, so yeah, let us know where you're from. Part of the uh, chat to win is about having conversations and saying hi. You can drop emojis, but really just uh, be active in the chat and enter a chance to win a, I believe it's still the Moo gift card, Moo.com. Uh, so we've got a $30 off gift card that we'll give away, which is a great opportunity to uh, you need to kind of work on your first, I guess, brand impression for de designing your own business card. That could be a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, no, absolutely. Someone from France is in here. Salute. Hello someone from said, Brazil. Someone said they don't like sharing their sketches, but I feel like nobody's sketches are all that great. So don't be don't be afraid to share your sketches. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's no reason not to share. It's, it's also a good way to open up your thought process and create uh, a good conversation with somebody about what you're thinking, um, maybe some ideas that you have. So, okay. So okay. thanks for thanks for taking us through a recap. Again, we've got Lauren Waters here. And we're on day two, so let's sit tight and have some fun. Let's do it. All right. Okay. So one thing I wanted to mention that I didn't mention yesterday, um, because I'm not redesigning the whole entire website for David Sheldrick, and I'll just show you guys. Um, so as you can see up here, there's a lot of navigational links. And one thing I would do if I was redesigning the whole website is 
um, take a look at the IA or the information architecture of the website. So basically what I did was, I'll zoom in here, but I took inventory of all of the pages that I could find in the David Sheldrick current website. And I just laid them out all sloppy here. Well, actually it doesn't look that sloppy. It's but very, very organized. <laughs> um, and then I kind of looked at those and saw if I could com combine any of the, the pages together or the links together. And then over here, I tried to narrow down the links to about seven or so. Um, and then as you can see here, I just put pages from over here under these links so that it could be cleaned up a little bit. So that's how I would organize um, the new IA if you guys were interested in that. Yeah, it's great. It looks like a site map or like you, like you yeah. mentioned, information architecture. Mm -hmm. So it's really great. Yeah. And then also last night, um, because I don't think you guys want to see me copying and pasting text in here. So I went ahead and I put in some actual copy um, for the home page. Just using the wireframes that I had, I just pasted copy in here, but I did it for all the pages that I went over yesterday. So it looks starting to look a little bit better now. It's coming together, don't you think? I, I think they look great. Um, I've, you know, I remember <clears throat> doing wireframes like this and using kind of large blocks for images, uh, mm -hmm. describing main content areas, organizing blocks of text. I mean, I think what really ends up being a lot of fun is how you transition this into the actual design phase and start adding color and values mm -hmm. and photos because so much of the work is done here right now for you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, really, really Actually, nice thorough I forgot wireframes. To bring my, I forgot to bring my sketches up here. No. Um, are they well, in the back? We they might, are in my laptop case, so maybe somebody, grab somebody can grab them for me. Um, so next, I'm going to be starting on the desktop page for Foster. And yeah, I wonder if someone can grab them. Maybe I can sneak off. Are they in your bag? <laughs> They're in my laptop case. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay, stay tuned. Coming back. Um, but I'm just going to take the same template I was using for all of the other pages. So I'm going to still use um, this top navigation and then this hero image here. But I'm just going to delete the copy in there. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, we're good. And then I'm going to delete the rest of the copy lower on the page and then drag over elements from other pages if I need it. So I'm going to label this artboard Foster. Actually, I'm going to label this mobile page too because I didn't do that yesterday. Orphan Story Mobile. All right, so for the Foster page, I can go to the current website and show you guys. Um, I mean, when you go straight to this page, there's not even a button to press for Foster. So I wanted to make sure it was front and center on the new design. Um, and you scroll down and there's just a lot of copy and I just wanted to spice it up a little bit. And then at the very bottom is where you can select an orphan to Foster. So just moving that information up a little bit. So would you mind sharing, so you mentioned there's not a call to action up mm -hmm. at the top. Just from a maybe a product design perspective, um, wh why would that be a pain point or why is that something you would optimize as opposed to the way it's designed right now? Well, usually you <coughs> want your call to action above the fold mm -hmm. because a lot of people tend to not scroll all the way down the page. Um, like if you look at heat maps of websites, a lot of the, the action is up at the top of the page and not a lot below. So you always want to have your call to action up front um, before the fold. And that's the first thing you see. So awesome. it'll be the main focus. Great. Mm -hmm. Actually, for this page, I'm not going to use a big hero image because I want the focus to be 
on the copy of fostering. So I'm just gonna eliminate that. Hi, Tim. Hi, Racine. Eric, thanks for joining us again. The shortcut to turn on your layout is Command Shift Apostrophe. Is that what that is? Command Shift Apostrophe. And then to turn it off, you do the same thing. So what do you think, um, just for today, what are you thinking you, you'd like, if you were to think of what you'd like to get done in the next couple hours, you mm -hmm. know, objectively, <clears throat> are you leaning more towards getting into visual design today? Are you gonna continue doing wireframes? Um, I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, I'm gonna continue doing wireframes just so I can finish up some more screens and then we're gonna look at some inspiration for UI and pick out a color palette and pick out fonts um, so hopefully I can get your guys' help on with that. Cool. That sounds great. Yeah. <clears throat> Has anybody, is anybody just joining us? Uh, let us know where you're from. Say hi. Say hi to Lauren. And uh, definitely give her a high five for, for spending the next uh, couple days with us designing on Adobe XD. <laughs> So I like how they have on their website, some of their copy is really good. At the Foster page, they say, choose an orphan whose story touches you. And I really like that because you're, you're not just selecting an orphan um, just randomly. You can read through their stories and see which one you connect with the most. So I think that's really cool. And you mentioned a little bit yesterday, so you're, you're really passionate about the the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust mm -hmm. and uh, equally elephants are your favorite. Or <laughs> one, one of my favorite, favorites. I have favorite way too many favorites. But. Animals. Yeah. But um, is there anything else you'd like to share just about, I know you said you've um, actually helped adopt and take care of a few of the elephants. You ideally would love to have one in your backyard someday. <laughs> um, I have no, just, not personally taken care of them, but I've fostered several of them right. from the website. Um, eventually, I would love to help take care of them, but... Um, it's the next big trip. It is. It actually is. So, very excited about that. Yeah, a cool story um, that I read on one of their blogs, or maybe it was social media, was uh, once the orphans are released back into the wild, they will do their thing out there and create a family and have a baby, and then they will come back years later with their baby hmm. and introduce their baby to everybody there, like that's the awesome. keepers and the staff, just to kind of say thank you. That's cool. And we appreciate you, so. <clears throat> they're just, they're, they have so many amazing qualities about them, I just. Hi, Karina, Kelsey. Brian says he appreciates Adobe doing this. It's helping his transition into UX and UI design. Oh, so cool. Brian, thanks so much for sharing. That's awesome. Also, you know, use this as a format to ask any questions uh, for Lauren and uh, just let us know if there's anything else that we can help out with. So again, for if people are wondering why I keep looking down, I, I thought about what the design was gonna be before I came here. Um, so that's just what I'm looking at. Somebody asked about that yesterday. Yeah, we had a lot of really good questions yesterday. Um, people were covering, you know, button styles versus pill shapes and rounded rectangles. Mm -hmm. um, getting into UX and UI design. Hi, Manir, great to see you. I really wanted to simplify this process of choosing an orphan because when you scroll down here, 
They have two different sections to do it where you can either choose a group where they are. There's different groups of orphans and then also choosing a name. So I'm just gonna stick to choosing a name because I don't think you necessarily need to go here and then choose a name. So I just wanna simplify it as much as I can. And then I'm gonna have a link easily accessible to click. Once they choose a name, they can read their story and see if they connect with it and if that's the one they wanna foster. So someone's asked whether or not you're going to leave the background white. I am going to leave the background white, I think. Um, except for the hero images at the top of some other pages. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy minimal design, so I like having a white background with minimal text if possible and um, just keeping it simple. Yeah, so far there's a great use of white space. Yeah. <clears throat> and don't forget, we've got the chat to win today. So last time I think we uh, we started talking about it a little bit towards the end and it just like the chat feed just absolutely blew oh, up. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, <laughs> please let us know where you're from. Um, as always, I love to see uh, people sharing emojis. If you got a Mac, you can do the shortcut for the keyboard. Um, say hi, ask questions. Um, wonderful opportunity to, to learn from a professional Lauren here. And um, yeah, just let us know what you're thinking. We'd love to hear from you. A professional Lauren. <laughs> I said we have a professional here, right? You said a, oh, we have a professional, a professional comma, Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> a professional. <clears throat> so um, I know we covered yesterday, but just a little bit about um, where you're from, where you're currently working, mm -hmm. just a little bit of context would be great just to share you know, from a professional Lauren, it'd be awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm currently living in San Diego and someone said I hate reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eric. I'm sorry, but sometimes you have to. Um, Hi, Stanley. <laughs> yeah, so I'm currently living in San Diego and I've been there for about 10 years. I went to San Diego State and then I love San Diego, so I never left. Um, and I'm working at a company where I'm building their online banking platform for desktop and mobile. And uh, yeah, just doing UX design, UI UX design currently. We've got a We've got a Dirk Wires in the in the chat room as well. That would be my husband. <laughs> <laughs> hey Dirk, thanks for joining us. Hi husband. <clears throat> and congratulations, because you Thank guys just you. recently got married. That's fantastic. A couple months ago, yeah. That's awesome. San Diego burritos are the best. I would, yes, I would agree with that. There's a lot of taco shops especially if you can find the ones with french fries in them. Ooh, California burritos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Kevin like, would like to know, how long has Lauren been doing web design and what work is she most pleased with? Hey Theo, thanks for joining from New York. I have been doing web design for, I wanna say, well, I graduated college in 2012. So I was doing some web design there and visual design and graphic design. So I guess since then it's been, how long is that? I'm definitely not a math major. So in 2012 you said that? 
2012. So it's been about six years? Six years. <clears throat> Theo asked what I'm drinking, so I'm drinking coffee, and then I'll move to water. Coffee. <laughs> it's, it's coffee. <laughs> And um, just a brief intro for myself. So I'm Mark Risen. I'm a local San Francisco designer here. Um, been a been a host with Adobe quite a few times. Love coming in and sharing with the community. Something I shared uh, yesterday on Twitter is just I love how positive and how reinforcing uh, the community is here, and just the the chat and the way that people share each other's ideas, push each other's ideas. Um, so yeah, I'm a local designer here, uh, working at a startup called Matter, and. Um, you know, one of the things, oh yeah, my t-shirt. One of the things we're focused on is um, helping professionals grow their skills through feedback, so. Very cool. So did you share what is something that you're proud of? Oh, right. Um, something I'm proud of. I would say I'm very proud of what I'm currently working on at my, the company I'm currently at. So the online banking platform has been challenging in the best way because, I mean, when you think about designing a banking platform, there's so many regulations and requirements and information that goes into this. So it's been really cool to design for that because I've never, I've never had a project like what I've mm. been working on before. So it's definitely challenging, but um, I've learned a lot from it, so. Yeah, they say that's like the balance of, <clears throat> you know, kind of finding your focus or finding, um, I guess, your your flow. Mm -hmm. But they say it's, you know, how aligned you are to being challenged and then how aligned your skills are to meeting that challenge. So it sounds like you're you're right there at that threshold of like something that's going to be very fulfilling for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, because sometimes whether it's challenges, that friction can often push you in a really healthy direction. Yeah. Hey, Kaylin, thanks for joining us. And Kevin says thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> what else? Anybody else have any questions? <clears throat> so right now I'm just, um, I'm doing a section on this page from right here where I'm showing the user what their gift will include when they foster an orphan. So they just have this list here with a bunch of text, but I'm gonna try and design it in a different way where it's um, a little more interesting. Probably include little icons or something. Marion wants to know if you do coding. I don't, no. I know a little bit, but if I were to go in there and try and code something myself, I think I'd be lost. So Theo asked uh, <clears throat> what sets XD apart from uh, when designing sites from other tools. I mean, I think a lot of tools have a good amount of similarities, mm -hmm. but XD has a lot of little features like um, like the repeat grid and the uh, like when you drag an element around, it shows you the padding and it it's easy to align text and elements. Um, so little things like that make it very efficient mm -hmm. to use and fast for prototyping, which I really like. Yeah, I, I agree. I think there's a lot of um, intention in the details. Mm -hmm. I think Tim also really added what um, I would say is also super beneficial is the connection to the Creative Cloud, and yeah. also being able to store your work in the Creative Cloud and having that sync between all the products, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of the, the the seamlessness between Illustrator, Photoshop, albeit any of the tools that you're using, After Effects. Um, and it's easy so. to share files, right? Oh share yeah. Share files. Yep. Within, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you can create folders and collaborate with people mm -hmm. and share assets. Uh, it's really really. I've, um, I've, I've been able to speed up a lot of projects just by having shared libraries that I already have created and I can get started on something really, really, really quickly.
We're about five minutes away from our chat to win. So if you haven't already said hi, drop us a note, say hi. Drop an elephant. Drop an elephant. Elephant emoji. Yeah. You know? No, uh, but if you do, you basically enter to win the, uh, the Moo.com gift card, and we'll give you $30 on your first Moo purchase. Um, so which is, it's a, it's a great way to get a little bit of exposure uh, in regards to creating your first business card. Um, I think we talked a little bit about this yesterday. I don't remember what my first design business card was, but um, I definitely remember, uh, yes, we're getting some elephant emojis. Um, I definitely remember what it felt like to, to kind of create my first business card and share it with somebody. And Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a really, uh, it's a great milestone. Yeah. Look at all those elephants. I wonder what the emoji library is that they're using in the chat. You know what they're missing is um, they have faces of some other animals in the emojis, but they're they're like baby faces of the emojis. Hmm. They don't have a baby face of an elephant. What is up with that? I don't know. Baby elephants are pretty cute. They are. Hi, Jasmine. Thanks for saying hi. Oh man, we're getting the whole the whole family oh, here. Oh wow, you guys are going crazy <laughs> over there. <clears throat> Hi Kelsey. It's great to come in and see a lot of names that I recognize too. Like Muneer's been um, definitely active in here for quite a while. Kelsey I recognize. Tim, uh, of course. Nathan's definitely been a presence. How do you drop the elephant emoji? Oh yes, the pun jokes. <clears throat> Whoa, Chantel dropping the whole animal kingdom. <laughs> All right, so finishing up this section, and then that's gonna be it for this page. I wanted it to be pretty simple. Um, hopefully we can narrow down that copy because it's throwing all the rest of them off a bit, but we can figure that out. <clears throat> and one minute left until the chat to win wraps up. So why do elephants like peanuts? What else do they eat? They eat bananas. They eat, yes, and they also just eat um, a lot of plants, mm -hmm. brush. Like some and... form of hay or grass or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Trisha. Yeah, when we were, um, when we went to the, the sanctuary in uh, Chiang Mai, mm -hmm. it was like they were literally eating every hour, just like. Piles oh, and they're piles always and piles eating. I mean, bananas. it's amazing how much they can stuff in there. I mean, they are pretty big, but. <clears throat> Blanca says they eat leaves and bark. Mm -hmm. I wonder where that came from that elephants like peanuts. Maybe the circus. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, certainly roasted peanuts don't exist in the wild, maybe. Right. <laughs> or those sugary <clears throat> ones. Mm hmm And we're in the last 10 seconds of our countdown for okay. the chat to win. Yes, the San Diego Zoo is great, and the San Diego Safari Park. If you guys are in San Diego, you should definitely check the Safari Park out. That's my favorite. The zoo is also great, but really cool to go around and explore. All right, all right. So we've got a brief intro video for the chat to win. Stand by. All right. Oh. I love all the, the pews and explosions. Alrighty, so 
As you know, every time we do the Adobe Live, we have a chat to win. And uh, obviously we give away a gift at the end of the chat to win. So we'll be picking a winner, winner from random. Anybody that's uh, dropped an emoji said, hi, holy moly, everybody is very active. <laughs> but yeah, anybody that said hi, asked a question, um, just join the community. Um, if you're not a part of Behance, you can definitely sign up and register um, just to kind of be a part of this community and uh, definitely chat with everybody. So thank you so much. Uh, the winner today will be getting a gift card from Moo.com. And as soon as we figure out who the winner is, we'll let you know. It is it is crazy in there right it now. Is, what? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a little dizzy looking at that, to be honest. I love the uh, animations behind us right now. I know. Looks like my head's <clears throat> exploding. Ooh. Amazing. Do we get a drum roll for the winner? Yeah. Now we're just, we could do How this long indefinitely. Do we do this? <laughs> Until we actually know. Okay, well, um, we got it. Rasim Baltic? Rasim. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Rasim, Congratulations. Yay. You just won a $30 gift card for Moo.com. Please, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I want to see all the the uh, business card designs now. If, I know. Uh, when people actually do them, so hopefully. So if uh, you win, you have to send us the design you come up yeah, with. Yeah, that'd be great. Or post it to your Behance. We'd love to see, uh, you know, what you were able to do and then also um, how you were able to get your, your business cards made. So thanks so much, everybody. Uh, that was just a whirlwind and flurry of text. It really was. For about the last, like, three minutes. So that was incredible. Um, again, we've got Lauren Waters here. Uh, we're working on a redesign for the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. We're on day two. Um, first day was a little bit focused on <clears throat> wireframing. Wire mm -hmm. Day one, we're carrying over wireframing. We're gonna go into some UI and some inspiration later on. Yes. And Lauren's been doing an incredible job without any internet. Uh, I mean, it's basically like your hands it's behind back the back. on today, yeah, but, the whole uh... time, so. <clears throat> So in case you want to try to win in the uh, next segment also, um, we've got Josh coming up next. Uh, I believe he'll be with um, Michael Chase. So stick around, you'll get another opportunity. Um, as Tim just shared in the chat, you'll have another opportunity to um, get a discount with Moo.com. Um, so yeah, good stuff. Congratulations, Racine. Congratulations. Uh, so somebody did ask, Tiffany asked about uh, turning off the shortcut for the grid uh -huh. um, that you have. I know you shared it earlier, but it'd be good just oh, to do a, sure. a refresher. Yeah, so if you just go on your keyboard and press command shift apostrophe. Oh, you have to be selected on the artboard too. Command shift apostrophe, it turns it on and off. And Robert asked if you prefer to use a grid while you're working or if you prefer to kind of uh, I do to when an extent, just to make sure that everything's lined up correctly um, and that I'm not going outside of my grid at all. Mm -hmm. But I'm sometimes I don't follow it as much just because um, I don't feel like I need to, but. So Tiffany, uh, do make sure that you're selecting the artboard. Yes. When you're using the uh, shortcut. Or I think you can just click on the artboard anywhere and it will do it, yeah. And you can also toggle it over in the right side panel. Um, oh, <laughs> right here, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have a favorite grid that you use? I usually use a 12 column. Mm. But, um, I mean, depending on the artboard size, I'll choose the width, but um, 1440 width mm -hmm. is usually what I do. And then 12 columns with like 30 pixel padding between each column. Awesome. I think that's just what I'm used to using, so mm -hmm. it's my default. What do you use? Uh, I use an eight column grid. 
Okay. Eight column, 32 pixels, 96, I think. Or eight pixel, 96, 32. It's very specific. Yeah, the I, I think material design and a couple other people are pretty standard on like uh, denominations or multiples of eight. Okay. And so it's a good way to, you know, it, it definitely doesn't work for, for mobile because they have odd numbers, but yeah, I like to use eight, 32, 64, numbers like nice. that. I actually have, so <laughs> this is like a, a funny thing. So when I create an artboard and I actually do my work, I actually create, I like Googled all the multiples of eight up into like the thousands. Uh -huh. And so I just have this list of all the multiples of eight. And so anyway, anytime I need to pick a box, you know, I make sure it's oh, okay. like 440, 640, but always divisible by eight because it helps me maintain the grid and, mm. and everything, yeah. It's very mathematical of you. Thanks for joining us, Racine. Yep, Theo's got it. And if you're interested in participating in the challenge, we, we're really looking forward to seeing uh, your work today. Just go into the challenge tab, which is the third tab over in the, uh, the chat, pa chat panel. And then um, we've got details in there about the prompt. Um, the goal is to design a fashion blog, blog today. And we've got some resources um, in there for you to use. Don't feel overwhelmed. There's a lot of great content in there. Maybe just pick one thing. Say that. Yeah, just pick one thing and uh, just kind of evolve it. You know, I think they're looking for two to three interactions. So yeah, just have some fun. Especially if you've never done a fashion blog before, it could be um, a great way for you to get some exposure to um, really, really nice photography. And you don't have to use all of the assets that are in there, right? You don't have to Correct. use everything. Yeah. yeah so don't feel like you have to. Yeah, there's really no um, no need to use all the assets. Just pick one screen, maybe two. Yeah, I'll see if I can pull it up. I was looking at the, uh, Gus showed me the resource earlier. It's really nice. <clears throat> and then once you've, uh, once you've completed your designs, we'll, uh, we'll at about an hour and a half into the segment, we'll take some time and we'll, we'll take a look at everybody's work. We'll provide some feedback. We'll share some insights. Uh, it's a really, really great opportunity to share your work. So here on the mobile version, I wanted to add a little bit of a different element just because you can do that when it's a mobile app. You can add a few more things or eliminate. So I'm adding on the foster page um, three simple steps. So when the user comes, they can just easily see um, the three steps that they have to do and they're fairly simple. So um, you don't have to put a lot of effort into doing this and I wanted to make sure that they knew that. And you mentioned you can either omit or add additional content to mobile. Mm -hmm. um, is that just like personal preference for you or is that just something that you've learned through your experience that sometimes when you take a full web screen and squish it into 360 pixels? Yeah, I mean, I think you should be careful if you're omitting things because if there's something on the desktop that you're able to do and then you're not able to do that on the mobile. I don't think that's mm -hmm. a very good practice, but um, I think little things, if you want to change them up, are okay. Like, for example, the mobile screen is much smaller, so I just wanted to add at the top um, these steps over here because on the desktop screen you can easily scroll down the page, mm -hmm. and I didn't want them to have to do all of that on the mobile. So. Great. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any questions for Lauren? Let us know. 
Um, I did pull up the Hidden Treasures UI kit, just in case. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead and share. We wanted to share. Um, so, as I mentioned, there's a lot of really great resources here. Definitely don't be overwhelmed by it. Um, the, the, the fact that the color palette and the font styles are already in the assets is really going to speed up your work. Um, and what's really nice is uh, it sounds like maybe this was done by Melody. I'm seeing that name at the top. Um, Melanie David. But uh, there's a really good juxtaposition of looking at content in kind of a wireframe structure and then looking at what those screens would look like with actual content in them. Um, so start wherever you feel comfortable. Um, if you feel more comfortable kind of choosing text and starting there and replacing your own text, or if you want to use this empty template here and just start dragging and dropping images and then um, putting in some content that maybe is more fashion focused, uh, that'd definitely be good. Some interactions that you could think about are obviously you know transitioning between pages and your screens. Um, Maybe if you click on an image, you can do an, an overlay that'll show the overlay expanding and opening. Um, for the challenge, we're looking for about two, two plus interactions. So have some fun, get some exposure to a new style, a new template. Um, even if this doesn't feel like your style, it's gonna be a really great opportunity for you to learn something. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if we had these UI kits when we were in school. Oh man, it would make life so much easier. It just, it'd be incredible. It would be. Yeah, we had it rough back then. Oh yeah, yeah. I used to have to do everything by hand. <laughs> With like exacto blades. And oh yeah. Black paper, rubber cement, sticks and stones. Sticks and no, stones. <laughs> it's a bit dramatic. Art school was tough. Okay. <laughs> it's very hard. I feel so sorry for you. Uh, Brian asked, are you allowed to use these UI kits on the job? Hmm. I don't know. I wonder if Tim has a has an opinion there. Yeah, so in these screens, after I did the three steps here, I have a get started button at the bottom. So it will take them to the net, to the first step, which is selecting a name. And once they select that name, they can go to the next step, which is reading the orphan's journey. And then if they, if they like the story behind that orphan, then they should choose that one to foster. Uh, so Tiffany said she had a French keyboard. That might have been why she was having a hard time oh, toggling the okay. grid. Actually, I forgot. I'm <clears throat> going to make it even easier when they select a name. It's going to instantly drop down um, the story right below the, so they don't have to go to another screen. Awesome. This is great because it <clears throat> it's it seems like what you're starting to do is even though you're doing wireframes, you're also starting to imply or maybe work through what would be some of the UX mm -hmm. and what would be some of the experience. Yeah, I'm definitely a fan of simplified UX. I think the less screens the user has to go to, the less clicks they have to do, um, just to make it so they feel like it's kind of doing it for them on the app is what mm -hmm. I try to aim for as much as possible. And I'm actually going to be featuring Enkesha for the mobile orphan uh, story page. And she has a little bit of a sad story, but her recovery has been so amazing that I just, 
she's one of my orphans and um, she was found with her trunk almost severed off. And I'm sorry if that's kind of graphic, but um, the team did such a great job uh, taking care of her and now she's, I think they went back and forth if they should actually cut it off or if they should try and wow. save her trunk, like that's how bad it was. So they ended up being able, able to save her trunk and now she's able to use it normally. That's amazing. It still has a little scar, but you know, she's doing great now, so. Yeah, they're such amazing animals. Um, they're so much fun. The little baby one that I met was pretty, I think I mentioned yesterday, was pretty bashful. Yeah. So it's a little shy. <clears throat> Great content. You yeah, we're make, getting there. You should just make this a UI kit afterwards and just, <laughs> just share it as like a foundation. Good. Yeah, the good thing about this design is I'm reusing a lot of my components. I think I mentioned it yesterday, but I don't want to come up with too many different designs for components because it's so much easier to just pull like a certain number into other screens and not have to deal with like coming up with all these different components to use. So, and yeah. it also makes your app or website look very cohesive, which is an important thing to do. Yeah, and it, it helps simplify the development yes. implementation experience also, um, especially if you can build certain, certain things in the same way that they can be reusable. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ibad, thanks for joining us. You're missing your avatar. <clears throat> Stop being so mysterious. Yeah. <clears throat> should I get up? Oh, I can finally get some lore ipsum today. What what ipsum should I use? <laughs> Bacon ipsum. Bacon ipsum is funny. Have, Do you have guys have any funny Ipsums that you use? Have there been any new ones? I don't know. A Meteor Lorem, Lorem Ipsum Generator. Ten hilarious. Bob Ross Ipsum. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Ooh, Heisenberg Ipsum. <laughs> Chuck Norris Ipsum. <laughs> Chuck Norris, wow. Amazing. Arnold. Hey, Paula. Thanks for saying hey. Doggo Ipsum. Ah, oh, Heba's back. She says you're killing it. Yay. Hi, Hiba. <clears throat> Hiba? Heba? Hiba. Hiba. She gets mad at me when I say, hey, Heba. So, I'm so sorry. Sorry, but I, I like I've got to say. butcher so many people's <laughs> names on here. All right, <clears throat> I'm just going to use one of these. Going with Heisenberg. I need a lot more than that. Uh. Pirate Ipsum. Ipsum. You know what? journey. The current website of their journey is very detailed and very long, which I understand because they want to include all the details that they went through. I mean, they even say the medicine they gave them and all of that stuff. Um, so I'm wondering if they could maybe narrow it down a little bit and just include the main key details of the journey, but I get that they don't want to like take away from 
what they've gone through. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we had some other good questions yesterday. Um, some were about okay. how many font styles that you use generally when mm -hmm. you're um, kind of stylized basically going into aesthetics or stylizing the, the website. So sometimes you will use two different fonts, maybe one for header style and then one for yes. body text. Yeah, I typically don't use more than two fonts just because I don't want it to get too busy. And um, I like to use one style for the bigger text fonts or the bigger um, sizes, mm -hmm. like the H1s and everything and page titles and um, headlines and all that. And then I'll use just a super simple font for paragraphs and body copy. Great. And I've noticed, um, I've noticed how you've been title casing some of your mm -hmm. H1s. Like sometimes it's um, capital letter, capital letter. Sometimes it's capital letter, no caps. Yes. Do you have a like a philosophy or a, a way that you approach that in particular, or is there an idea that you have about that? I think it depends on the brand. Okay. Um, if it's a more professional brand, like for example, I work for a bank, so I think title casing just looks a little bit more professional. And then if you have a more casual website, you can do what is it? All lowercase mm -hmm. or yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I agree 100%. It's also whether, like, what the subject is, because sometimes mm -hmm. it can be a proper noun and needs to be capitalized. So, you've got Tim calling me out on not using Behance. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> I, was talk I was talking about this yesterday with Michael, but um, there's so much that you can do with creating your Behance profile and representation of work. It's a little bit overwhelming. Mm hmm. <clears throat> in the sense that I see people doing such great representation, <laughs> he's shaming me, such great representations of their work that it's just, it's kind of, I mean, even I, yeah, like it's daunting. It's just like, oh man, these people are doing such incredible bodies of work. But um, yeah, I should definitely, definitely update that stuff. Yeah, I need to update my um, Behance as well and my Dribble. And my portfolio. It's hard though, because sometimes when you work somewhere, you can't post things until a certain point. So that's where I'm at and I'm waiting until it's okay to share what I've been working on mm -hmm. with the public. Nathan asked uh, vertical spacing. <coughs> <clears throat> is that something that you that you generally try to tighten up while you're going through the wireframing experience, or do you do it once you get into interface? Um, yeah, when I'm wireframing, I just kind of eyeball it, mm -hmm. and then I get p pixel perfect when I'm starting to do the UI. I think it's important because when you're handing off um, your designs to developers, you're probably using a tool like... Um, what's the Envision one? Inspect, Envision Inspect, or Zeppelin or something like that. And then when they go in and look at all the specs, you want it to be perfect or else it's gonna get coded, mm -hmm. if, however it looks on your design, so. Yeah, and, and in XD, you can export all the assets and you can have everything with all the dimensions um, oh, okay. provided as well. Um, but yeah, that I, I definitely do that further along in my process. It's amazing how much discrepancies and, and padding or margins can actually throw off yeah. the team that you're working yeah. with. Um, so, and Tim says Zeppelin works uh, really well with XD as well. Oh, okay, great. All right, so we are done with this mobile page now. We and, did it. Um, so there's a couple, under the foster section, there's a couple different screens that I wanted to do because it is a process. So we went from step one, which was selecting a name, and then step two, which is reading their story, which pops up 
after you um, select the button. And then step three will be the form they fill out to make it official. This is the confirmation experience? This is the uh, form that they're going to fill out. Oh, got it. I know, it kind of looks like a confirmation saying thank you, but... For your interest, that's more clarifying. Yeah. We have 30 minutes left for our challenge submissions. Oh man. Can we see if there is any yet? I could take a look. <clears throat> I'm curious how everybody's doing. So for the for the challenge, we're we're looking forward to seeing people submit ideas about a fashion blog. Um, you can you can find the the template and a little bit more information and description for the challenge in the challenge tab, which is in the chat view that most of you are talking in right now. Um, so yeah, we'd love to see your submissions. Let us know what you're thinking. Uh, you know, get inspired, check out some new work, you know, jump into something maybe that you hadn't done before, which is centered around fashion. Could be a great opportunity. And there's a really, really detailed template provided called uh, Hidden Treasures. <clears throat> And just in case the you know this one ends up being a little bit longer for everybody, we can definitely carry over your work and show it in the next segment that we have uh, with Josh and Michael coming up. So we can pull up the schedule also just to let you see. Um, you know we've got Lauren, Lauren Waters here, and then uh, Josh will be coming up next. So definitely make sure to stick around. We got to meet Josh last night at dinner. We did, yeah. yeah. That was fun. Great guy. Yeah, you guys should definitely tune into his. I know he has something exciting to continue working on. Yeah, so absolutely. I won't give anything away, but. Here I'm just walking through the forms. It's pretty boring, but. Um, I'm just getting all the sections that they require you to fill out. Did you say pretty boring? Well, it, I mean, forms aren't very exciting. <laughs> Maybe some people think they are, I don't know. <clears throat> Do you have any questions for the community? So I asked you guys about a font yesterday, and I'm still, there were some good suggestions, but I'm still looking for something a little bit more unique, I think, and not something that you see a lot. So if you guys have any more suggestions of fonts that aren't as common, I would love to hear what they are. I have a couple in mind, but I wanna see if you guys um, have anything that, that'll be good for this project. So um, because you fostered a couple element, uh, elephants, um, is there often some type of package or something that you get in the mail mm -hmm. once you've fostered one, like photograph, refrigerator, refrigerator magnets? Yes. So I did that on the desktop page here, but they, they tell you on this page. So you get a fostering certificate mm -hmm. with a profile and photograph of your orphan. And you also get an interactive map indicating where your orphan was found and then the description of that. Um, you get six things, so it's pretty cool. Okay, awesome. 
And um, there's a couple other things, like you'll get a really cool um, watercolor that Angela Sheldrick, she does a bunch of water watercolors of the elephants and she's the one who founded this organization. Hmm. That's awesome. So it's really special. Yeah, I can show you guys one of those um, watercolors in a little bit. <clears throat> so we've got less than 30 minutes left for the challenge. Um, Lauren Waters is here on day two doing the redesign for the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. Uh, we've been going through wireframes on both desktop and mobile. Uh, we've been using XD. Uh, both days basically mm -hmm. to kind of start moving through what will eventually probably be the experience, maybe even a prototype. I'm seeing you do a lot of different types of screens. Yes, um, I'm definitely going to prototype the mobile app awesome. because I'm not doing all of the desktop screens. Mm -hmm. And let's see, how many do I have here? I have three. I might do one more, but to be honest, the rest of the screens, I'm gonna, I would use the same components. So I'm not gonna design every screen because you guys get an idea of what the other pages would look like. Awesome. Um, but I am gonna design a good amount of the mobile screen so that I can do a prototype at the end. And what a great representational work. Like look at how many screens you've done. And yeah. it's been what, three hours? Yeah. Just over the past two days? Yeah. Pretty incredible. I mean, I did think about what I was going to do before this, so it's not all um, right off the top of my head, but, you know. So I really wanted to have a page in the mobile app too, also on desktop, but I'm just going to do the mobile version of it. Um, and it's a place where you can browse all of the orphans' names because they don't, they have that on the current website, but they don't have something that's simplified and where you can easily just scroll through, through all the names, click on them, read their story. It, it's a little more complicated that, than that on the current website. So I just wanted to do a page like this on the app to make it easy. submit your work for the challenge. Oh yeah. Boom. <clears throat> Have there been any fonts yet? Uh, yeah, we had um, source Sans Pro was one that Manir suggested. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's really cool to browse through Typekit. I like um, I like how they have. Uh, let's see. Like if you go to the main page, they have. Uh, all the styles of them, so you can just click on if you want sans serif, serif, all of these different kinds, which I think is super helpful. Um, I'm a fan of sans serif, mm -hmm. so. This is considered a sans serif. Hmm. Maybe there's, there's a way that it actually has serif on it. David says Montserrat. Okay. Yeah, Typekit's great. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what, you, what we use for our website. So a lot of great resources there. Yeah. It's awesome. I'm going to pull a 
little search icon from one of my UI kits. This is just a free um, icon set that I downloaded and I downloaded it in XD format so it's super easy to just pull in these simple little icons. Open Sans is a good one. That's the one that um, I think Atlassian used to use before we created our, our own. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I think the, it's the, their font's called Charlie Sands. Charlie Sands? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Maybe I should create a Lauren Sands. <laughs> you absolutely could. I could never create a font. I think it's, I just. I, yeah, I don't know if I would actually want to, but maybe I could have someone create it for me. I have deep admiration <laughs> for the people that, that do do it. And uh, it's just an incredible talent. I just, I just don't think I have it. Don't say that, I'm I, sure you do. Yeah, it's, I just accept it, <laughs> I just. <clears throat> Dana says she loves to create fonts. Dana's, Dana, we'd love to see some oh, cool. examples. That'd be awesome. Can I request a Lauren Sands? <laughs> oh, Lauren's already a font. Really? Okay. Yeah. I want to see. Is it in Typekit? Mm. All around Gothic makes me think of elephant trunks. That's cute. I do, yes, I do want more of a rounded font because I feel like it adds kind of a f more fun element mm -hmm. to it when it's rounded. It sounds like you have some something in mind already. I do, yeah. I'll show you guys. It's um, I came across it the other day, but it's called Muli, Muli, <clears throat> and it has a lot of different weights, which I like, and it, it just looks super clean and. I like how the the letters are kind of bubbly in a way. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of Rubik. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is a top choice for my what I'm designing today. That's another good suggestion, David. Avenir was mentioned yesterday. Um, Avenir is good. And we both said it differently yesterday, too. <laughs> I said Avenir, you said Avenir. Oh, Avenir. What is it? I have no idea. <clears throat> I think it's Avenir. You're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I'm, I, so I, I was born in the South. I wonder <clears throat> if that's why I like. You were? Drag my A that way. Oh, yeah. okay. I was born in New Orleans. Oh, wow. So you just kind of people... lost your accent over the I, years? I, oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we moved when I was 10. Dang. Anybody from New Orleans? From the South? I've never been there. You were just mowing through these designs. Oh, I should, hello. I should be using repeat grid here. Sometimes I forget. Woo! Look at that. And done. And we're done. No, I'm just kidding. So actually, this is going faster because I'm going to use the same, minus the top part here, I'm just going to use the same detail page of the orphan from over here when they click on one of these names. So. Thanks for sharing, Kaylin. So she says that Avenir comes from Avenir. Avenir comes from the French word for future. <clears throat> oh, cool. Good to know. Hi, Sam. I haven't seen you yet. I don't know if you're in the office. I didn't see her today either. She come say hi. Um, another cool thing I wanted to do for the app is at the 
at one of the icons at the bottom, I wanted to have a tab for my orphans. Mm -hmm. So you can see which ones you've fostered. And oh, then I'm also going to include a little feature on the detail page with a heart. So you can heart an orphan if you want to adopt them maybe later on. Awesome. So you can have all your saved um, orphans in there too. Forgot to put the heart. No. <laughs> and Daniel, just to answer your question, you can definitely you, you can definitely um, build websites from XD. But yeah, you're not going to be doing any any coding if that's what you're talking about, um, which is what you would do in Dreamweaver. How does this not have a heart in it? Mm. Nothing. Nope. Okay, I'll find one later, but I'll just put a smiley face for now. What about a thumbs up? I could do that. Do they have that? I wow. do not see one. Nope. Yeah, so next after I finish up these wireframes, I want to build my font styles and also build my color palette. Awesome. So someone asked what we're working on. We are currently working on redesigning the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust website, which is this guy right here. Um, and as I'm designing each page, I've, I've already done the home page. I've done the orphan um, detail page. And then I've done the mobile versions of those. Oh, I've also done the foster page, and I'm continuing to work on um, the app screens for a few more of these pages. Um, I mentioned before I'm not going to be doing all of the desktop pages because they'll have a similar template to what I've already been doing. So I wanted to focus a little bit on the mobile app. I'm on the last screen I'm going to be doing for the mobile app, what? which is crazy. I, was, uh, I had a, a question in my mind, which was, mm -hmm. um, so when if you were to evolve this into the actual final design, do you work on top of your wireframes? Would you copy and paste them and then simply start adding styles and color to them? Like maybe just share a little bit about what your workflow yeah. would be. Um, I would probably, well, I do copy these because I want to make sure I still keep my wireframes mm -hmm. if I, for whatever reason, need to reference them later. Um, so I'll make a copy of all these artboards and then I'll start doing the UI on, awesome. on top of those. And if you're just tuning, tuning in, thanks for saying, hey, we've got Lauren Waters here on day two. And we're redesigning a wildlife trust mobile experience and web. Mm -hmm. We've got about 15 minutes for uh, anybody that'd like to submit challenges for the fashion blog. Um, hopefully you've been able to dig into the template a little bit and just see a lot of the great resources that are there. Um, 
if you're not able to get the submission done in this round, we'll definitely review it in the next round with uh, Josh and Michael. And thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. This, this is awesome. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Mel. Walter, hello. Robert asked, is this a paid project that you're currently working on at your company, or is it just for this segment? It is not a paid project. Um, this is some. This is an organization that I just feel is very dear to my heart, and I have a lot of orphans that I've adopted from this organization, so it was more of a passion project. And um, so, no, I'm not getting paid for this. Maybe if they see it, they eventually will. <laughs> Um, but no, this was just for fun. I do a lot of these side projects just for fun, just to, I mean, when you work at a job, sometimes you're working on the same project and same design system and same templates that you might get a little stale. So I just like to keep my, creative juices flowing and work on side projects when I can. Even if they're not paid, just to play around with new designs and... Sage advice there. Yeah. No, I mean, even if you're, <clears throat> you know, absolutely like staying up with your craft is, mm -hmm. um, is a huge component of that, but also, um, you know, just if you're curious about something or if you have an idea about something, take the time. To, Absolutely, yeah. To do the work outside of work. It's, and uh, anything you design, I mean, you can post it on your your uh, Behance, your portfolio. It's not like you're just doing it and then it's a waste of time. It, you can post it on several platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure it's it's probably a pattern that most people have kind of done their own passion projects as a way to get their new job or to get exposure to product design. It's a, it's a really, really great way just to try out new things. Yes. Nathan asked, why not repeat grid that whole thing? Sometimes, um, especially when I'm up here, I'll forget. So I'll realize, uh-oh. We just lost the chair. <laughs> it's all good. I'll realize after the fact, and then maybe if I already have one down, I'll just do the rest of them, so. It's just me being forgetful. Alexander, Jan, thanks for joining us. <clears throat> My foster babies. <laughs> I didn't really want to say my orphans just because, eh. Okay. But uh, I just, my foster babies just sounds better to me. <laughs> Way better. <laughs> Okay, actually, I think we are done with all, or I think all the mobile so screens. So much work. Um, so now I would like to get started on the UI, which is gonna be fun. And first I'm gonna go ahead and um, establish what font I'm using. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use that Mooly one. Okay just because um, it's something I, I haven't used this font before and I really like how it looks and I like how many different weights it has and I just feel like it fits, so. Awesome. <clears throat> <clears throat> and we've got less than 10 minutes to share your design challenge. Um, I'm happy to pop over and share just a little bit of inspiration just in case you're, you're looking for some 
in regards to Fashion Blog. This was a um, <clears throat> previous submission or earlier work from Osama. So probably not on the, the same template that we provided, but a really, really great uh, source of inspiration just in case you're curious about looking at uh, what a fashion blog might look like. Um, so we've got, you know, obviously the focus here is on the, the photography and the main content and the focus being on the, the, the fashion. Um, this looks a, a little bit similar to kind of an e-commerce or maybe purchasing um, site, so maybe this is actually more geared towards um, like a store. But definitely some great inspiration here. So take your time, uh, access the template. You can, you can find it in the challenge tab in the chat feed. Um, would love to see your work. Would love to have you share your ideas. Definitely don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Or be shy. Just don't be shy about sharing your work. Yeah. Okay, so I went ahead and put in this um, text in the hero because they have this in their current website. And um, it's kind of their headline, so I didn't, I didn't really want to change that. I forget where that was, but it's somewhere on this page. Um, oh, it was under Unsung Heroes. So I also wanted to mention they have this really great book that they put together and it's called The Unsung Heroes. And um, I actually own it, but it basically has all the information you need to know about um, David Sheldrick. And then it has all of, each page has the story of the orphans and really beautiful photos in it. So if you wanna check that out, I highly recommend it. Some nice parallax going on on the website. Yeah, this, this website's pretty nice. Very cool. It's like 80% photography. Yes. Which is, can make your job pretty easy. Jan says we need to rename the orphans to orphans. Orphans. <laughs> I think he trademarked it also earlier. Oh, okay. So here I actually put in the font. Wait, yes, this is Muli. Muli. And I'm thinking I want to use for the bigger the bigger sizes um kind of a bold maybe extra bold even. Just so it really stands out because I know I'm going to eventually put a photo back here. Um And then for these guys, so we have a question for you, which is, do you have any artists that inspire you? <clears throat> I do. There's a couple I follow on Instagram and on social media. Um, I think she, well, she's a graphic designer, but Jessica Walsh was always mm -hmm. a good one. Um, she was one of the first people I started following on Instagram, I think. But, um, I mean, I follow all different kinds. Like I follow some, what is it? Hand lettering people that I think are really cool. Um, but I can't, I can't think of like a UX designer that a name comes to mind. I just kind of browse all different, all different um, designs on Behance or um, other design inspiration websites, but I don't really have a name for a UX designer. Awesome. I guess I could say you. Me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think. Artists, I mean, Heather Day is a local artist that I really um, enjoy. She does a, a lot of murals and a lot of abstract mm. um, artwork. UX design. I mean, Karim Sewer is, <clears throat> or Kiram Sewer, is a pretty notable um, designer out in the San Francisco area. He okay. just does really, really beautiful work. Um, Dan Petty, big inspiration, especially for the freelance community. 
Is there a way to change the font as a font style? Um, so yes. I, th I think they're asking if you created a font style, are you oh, able okay. to change it? Yeah, so actually right now I'm putting all of these ones as a character style. Um, I actually made it a symbol on accident. But I'm gonna get rid of this Helvetica one too. So for all of these larger headlines, I'm gonna do um, it at Muli 70 pixels, mm -hmm. 70 points. Um, and then I believe you can just, if I wanna change all these over here, do I just click on it or? I think there's a way to double click on it. Oh, double edit, click. Edit um, it maybe, no, that's to rename. What happens if you right click on it? Does that do anything? Edit. Hmm. Cool. So yeah, you can. <clears throat> oh, this is for editing. Kind of edit the boldness, default size, font color, and then mm -hmm. that should go across everything in XD. Okay, but what about for ones from other mockups that I haven't changed yet that I would like to be this style? Is there an easy way to do that? So if you have them selected and then you select the character style, mm -hmm. it sh should update them. No. Yeah. Or unless it's the style that you're picking there. No. Um, I don't know why that's not working. Huh. What if you right click on it? Does it say, like if you right click on the uh, style again? Oh. Or add characters? No, that'll copy it. Highlight on canvas. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. I'm sure somebody will be able to help us out. <clears throat> We've got less than three minutes left. Uh, Zach, I, I know you said you were working on your submission. Um, just in case you don't make, meet the window, uh, Michael and Josh would definitely love to review it in the next session. But thanks so much for uh, for sharing with us and, and just jumping in. That's awesome. Have you decided if you're going to be on Twitter yet? <laughs> I probably should be now. Um, I don't know, I've just never been, it's like the last social media that I hmm. that I got and I, then I was never very active on it. Yeah, it's Am I missing out? It definitely takes some work. I mean, there, there's a really great community of yeah. designers and people out there. Um, you know, Zach, Zach Nielsen's definitely um, a name that I've recognized on there, Tim for sure. Um, but yeah, it's a good way just to kind of Share what you've been working on. Also, just mention yeah. people, talk to them. Kyle Chapin has great UX projects in Behance. Yeah, for now, or uh, going forward, I'm also going to make sure um, to look at all my pixels too to make sure that they're, like that said 139, should make sure it's at 140. Yeah, Tiffany says she can't, she's really enjoying seeing the work in progress. Oh, and looking thank you. Forward, looking forward to seeing the final. Diego, thanks for joining us. Mateus. Thirty seconds left for the submission deadline. And I think I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Somebody say pink elephant. Oh no. Okay, it passed. Pink elephant. <laughs> you good. <clears throat> Gabriel, hey, good to see you again. Thanks for joining us on day two. I like how your reaction was like, I was just going to spit everywhere when I say, you're like, no. I don't know, man. Some people do just, that. Like, I was on a plane recently when the guy didn't cover his mouth. Hmm. Maybe that's why I'm kind of sick now. Could be. Yeah, and if you're just joining and you'd like to submit the your design challenge for the next round, um, 
as uh, we just shared in the chat stream. You can access all the information in the challenge tab, which is the third button over in the chat. <clears throat> okay, so for body paragraphs, I'm gonna go ahead and use size 24 and change it to Molly. I'm just gonna use Molly throughout the whole thing because they have such a wide variety of um, styles that I don't feel like I have to pick another one. And I feel like it's easy to read when it's in a smaller paragraph form. Yeah, very legible. I hate that when there's like that one little hanging word Yeah, it's it's a it's a funny it's a funny corner to like work yourself into from design perspective when you space things solely based off of the the amount of text or something that's in there as right. opposed to like trying to think about how they would respond and react to each other. I mean, it's not really <laughs> worth it to go in and manually make it look good because when it's coded, it's mm -hmm. this is how it's going to look. So. Totally. Make this a character style. Mitch, fear not, we got your submission. So turn that frown upside down. <laughs> do you name your character styles or just just leave them how they? Uh, it depends. Yeah, sometimes I'll, you know, H1, H2, H3, body, mm -hmm. footnote, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Tim, you just told everybody. <laughs> Mitch, that's some great feedback though. Let us know um, how the submission process can be improved or if, if there's anything you were struggling with. Uh, maybe not in the chat, but definitely send a message to Adobe. <clears throat> you cannot bribe Gusbot. You can bribe Gus, but you can't bribe Gusbot. Sorry, I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm in another world today. Oh, man. Just, yeah, just uh, maybe. You need to calm down. We should, like, push me off to the side. <laughs> um, so we did get a submission. Do you want to, are you, are yeah, you focused right now? No, you let's, take a look? let's do it. Yeah. I mean, the, the focus right now is just going all towards Mitch, which oh. is great. Okay. It's a great opportunity. Yeah. So let's, oh, nope. We need to wait for the resubmission. Sounds like the link might be broken. Stay tuned. You have to click on, you can't just click here, you have to click on the the letters. Hmm. Good to know. Hmm. So if you're just joining us, uh, we've already given away a $30 gift card to mood.com. We've also just completed the submission deadline for our challenge today, which was working on a fashion blog. Um, we've also been working with Lauren Waters here. We're on day two. Um, we're almost almost ready to wrap it up. We've got a, just short of a half hour left. And Lauren has been walking. In the whole thing? Just for today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That went by fast. Yeah. Light speed. Okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> Lauren, you've been working on the... Uh, I have to keep on reminding David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. And uh, we've been redesigning their landing page, their mobile experience. Um, we've been working through wireframes uh, for two days. Mm -hmm. And um, starting on the UI now, though. Starting on interface to go through some inspiration you mentioned in, uh, in your earlier yes. segment. And uh, stick around. We've got Josh Iwata coming up next with Michael Chase.
Hey Mitch, thanks so much for uh, having your submission. It, it also sounds like, um, you know, maybe you're new to XD or just new to the whole submission process. So definitely appreciate you leaning in and, um, and trying it all out. We've got your submission up and um, we'll spend a little bit of time and have Lauren and myself have a look at your work. Sure. And let's do it. Alrighty. So uh, just a quick refresher. So the prompt was to design a fashion blog and okay. we provided a uh, template or UI kit um, that was created by Melanie David called Hidden Treasures. And there were some great uh, wireframes as well as full finished um, pages in there. And we're looking for basically two pages or, or an experience of two clicks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, so we got Mugatu World. I like the teal color. Can you scroll down? Uh, so I, I think this, oh. it looks like it's got a... Oh, okay. So the interaction is is clickable, um, but I don't think there's any scrolling. I think somebody asked earlier how to scroll in your prototypes, and just to let you know, you just basically lengthen the artboard or the canvas that you're working on, mm -hmm. and then it'll scroll uh, once you preview it in prototyping. It's an interesting photo. Which photo? So the photo the one on the, on the right. Yeah. So first reactions. Uh, how do you feel about composition? Use of white space? Um, anything that kind of stands out to you in particular? Um, maybe focal points, like where your where's your eye gravitating to? You mentioned um, you really liked the teal color. Yeah, I think. I mean, first of all, my eye immediately went to the photo, which I understand because it's kind of a magazine feel. Um, and I, I like how he has the text on the left and then the image on the right because I think typically people read from left to right. Unless, and then, unless you're in Japan. Yes, unless you're in Japan. Um, one thing I will say is I would recommend having a little more padding um, between the text on the left and then the image on the right just to give it some breathing room. I think it'll flow a little bit better. Um, and same with just around all the text below the headline and then the body to the image. Um, but I like the color you chose and um, it looks like below those will be like other featured articles or mm -hmm. something. It's looking good so far. What do you think? Um, yeah, so I mean really, really great points. Uh, I definitely love the critique on the, the usage of margins and padding. Um, I definitely enjoy uh, you know, a generous amount of white space, and I also think, as you mentioned, giving breathing room can really help to focus on the content. Uh, let me hit the refresh button real quick and see if we have scrolling in there. Oh, got okay. a little scroll. Boop. Um, so just like little things that I notice, I, I definitely appreciate the consistency in the drop shadow and the fact that they're all going um, the same direction. Um, I think the you know some things that I would encourage you to to think about, which is one of the benefits of prototyping and live prototyping in XD, is you know when I when I view this in a in a web experience or full screen, some of the font um, sizes and dimensions may be a little bit small mm -hmm. or hard on the eyes. So as you kind of go from prototyping in XD to back to design. You know, just constantly evaluate your font sizes, make sure that they're legible. You definitely want to be cognizant of accessibility. Yes. Um, and so checking out whether or not the blue text or the teal text that you've chosen is a high enough contrast level, um, because otherwise you can actually, um, you know, leave out quite a few people if yeah. they're unable to, to, to see that. For people who don't know what that is, um visually impaired people have a hard time reading certain text um, if there's not a, a high enough contrast from the background to the text color. So um, we actually have to do a lot of that in online banking. Yep, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, so there's AA and there's AAA accessibilities. Yep. You can access an accessibility calendar. Uh, just do a search for it on Google and it's gonna check out your background, foreground contrast colors. Um, and it's a really good way just to, to you know, there's a lot of discussion about empathy in the design world today, but it's a really good way to be empathetic to visually mm -hmm. impaired people. Yeah, um, someone asked if XD has a, a accessibility color checker or maybe a plugin. 
Abigail, that's a great question. I, I don't know the answer, um, but maybe somebody from the community can help out. I'm sure there's some sort of a <coughs> plugin too. So yeah, Mitch, really, really, really nice submission. Um, really enjoy and appreciate you sharing your work. Um, Was there so, another page? So thank you so much, yeah. Oh. And then once you click on the image, so it looks like we've got a persistent header, um, <laughs> and then we're kind of inverting the content from image to text. And there's some scrolling. I like the uh, image he chose. What movie is that from? I forget. Zoolander. Oh, okay, that is from Zoolander. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned um, kind of the, the font, but I think a little bit of line height here would also benefit yes. from legibility. Um, so you can adjust the line height by going into the text editor in XD, but just giving a little bit more white space mm -hmm. in between the breaks in the sentences makes it much easier to read. You know, if you ever open up a book in print and you see how far apart the sentences are, um, yeah. you can definitely tell that people are being conscious of how quickly you can read things. Yes. And then if you scroll down a little bit, sure. Um, I would recommend uh, shortening the text box for, like not having the text expand all the way across the screen just because I feel like it's a long way for your eye to go across and then you have to go to the other line. Um, keeping shorter text boxes makes it easier to scan too, instead of doing like a full width text box on a page. Cool. Awesome, Mitch. You cool. get the gold star today. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. submitting. Yeah, awesome. Really, really great that you shared your work. Um, thanks for sharing it with everybody. So really, really nice job. Hopefully the feedback was helpful. Um, yeah. yeah, so thanks so much. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, so back to what we're doing. Um, I am currently trying to figure out my different character styles for each page. I probably don't want to use more than like four font sizes, um, just because when you use more than that, it gets a little more disorganized and I feel like the hierarchy isn't as defined when the more font sizes you use. So I like to keep it to maybe four or so. And I keep having an issue where I resize the text box and then it gets all funky. So we've got about, let's see, 12 minutes left okay. before we need to sign off. Wow. Just flew by today. Flew by. Um. Oh, we got another submission. Oh. But, but I think we're going to have to review it in the next segment. Okay. Zach, thanks so much for submitting. I know you mentioned earlier um, you're going to be first in line for the next session. Another size I'm going to choose is for the buttons, and <clears throat> I'm going to use size 24 and a bold, maybe extra bold for the button text, and I'm going to add it as a character style. And for my articles, I'm going to do, let's see, probably a nice in-between, so maybe around, I have it at 40 right now, I'll probably keep it as that. You think that's too small? Maybe I'll do 50. And then I'm just going to use the same. 24 body copy here. So Abigail, uh, you definitely have another opportunity to submit to the challenge in the next segment with Josh and Michael. So that'll be happening in the next uh, two hours. And um, there's also going to be a new challenge tomorrow. Um, so if you want to tune in tomorrow, 
we'll be here on day three and we'll have a new challenge that you can check out the uh, the challenge guidelines there. What's that? Portfolio review tomorrow. Oh, okay. Well, we're doing a portfolio review tomorrow. <laughs> that'll be fun. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start to look at some inspiration for colors right now. And um, I like to go to Behance to look at inspiration. So I just typed in a very simple search term here, UI. Mm -hmm. um, it's super broad, but I just kind of like to browse whatever comes up under there. And I think I want to do some brighter colors, nothing too um, muted, just because I want it to be an uplifting experience. So... Um, what are some colors that come to mind when you think of uplifting? When I think of uplifting, I think of like oranges, yellows, pinks, maybe even like a bright teal. Um, so brighter, warmer colors? I guess they could, they could still be cool colors, but just having a brighter cool color, okay. if that makes sense. A little more chroma. Yes. A little more saturation. And then for gradient, I think I, I know I want to use gradients too. So this is a site I like to go to. Gradient. Gradient. And they have a ton of gradients because sometimes I'm just spending too much time adjusting the color in XD to find the perfect tone for um, the gradient. So coming here is really helpful. Um, they have all these different tabs too, so. Whoa. 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 <laughs> Slow down. Yeah, so here you really get the full experience. That's great. And you can tab through. Wow, that's... Um... So yeah, I just kind of go through all these and then see which one um, feels the best for what I'm doing. <clears throat> so for buttons... Um, I'm going to define a size, and I think these look a little ginormous, so I'm going to reduce the height a little bit, and increase the, actually I do have a button. And then, sorry. <coughs> Go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm going to do a decent amount of padding on the side of the buttons just because the word is so short and I don't want to have like a teeny mm -hmm. little button. Tim was sharing uh, Adobe Capture is a good way to grab colors from real life. That's also a good one. Yeah. Is there a desktop version of that? Or I've just seen the mobile experience. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm also gonna add slightly rounded corners to my button, so maybe like five. And then. It's also going to depend what photo I put back here, so I want to make sure that um, I come back to this once I choose the photo to make sure that um, these buttons stand out enough on the background. Totally. And I actually do have a photo in mind for this hero, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. Awesome. Um, and just to let everybody know, we're going to be wrapping up in about five minutes. Okay with Lauren Waters, who's been joining, joining us for day two. And we've been working on the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust redesign. Look at that photo. That's amazing. <laughs> he looks so happy, or she. They love playing in mud, and it's oh, yeah. hilarious. Oh, yeah, that's how we gave him baths. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah mud baths. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you so much for sticking around. We've got Joshua Wata next with Michael Chase. They'll be doing the third and final segment for the, the day. And then tune in tomorrow, and we'll start all over again. Yeah on our third and final day. We're also gonna be doing a portfolio review uh, tomorrow.
for everybody that sub submitted um, challenges for today, thank you so much for sharing and being open to, to sharing with the community. Um, hopefully you learned something. If you weren't able to make the, the primary segment, um, definitely share it and it'll show up in the next segment. Tiffany, thank you. Thanks for joining us, everybody. So it looks like uh, we're just getting into some of the design and maybe some of the um, kind of like color choices. I know you mentioned yep. uh, getting inspired by UI. Um, so I'm sure tomorrow we'll have a lot more progress as we'll jump right into the visual design. Yes, so Kaylin, tomorrow should be a lot more exciting because um, you, you guys will get to see um, the progress of getting <clears throat> to the, the final design. So it'll start to really come together tomorrow. I know, thank you. Also make sure to stick around for Josh. Mud is good SPF. Indeed. It's it's gotta be thick enough. So have it's you got, ever it's taken like, a mud bath? I have. It's gotta be <laughs> like SPF one ten or something. <laughs> I think the last time was probably with the elephants, to be honest. Okay. And you have to be careful because they get so playful they can kind of roll over and you have to not oh. be on wow. one side of them, otherwise they can like squish you? squish you. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin, and thank you for asking uh, really great questions, as well as just advocating for other people in the in the community. It's really great just to see, you know, you how you are able to kind of cheer on other people. So definitely keep that up. Thank you so much. Tim, you're just I mean, you got the blue check mark, so you just you're just a you're a rock in the whole conversation as a whole. Got some compliments on the type choice. Oh, thank you. Which is called Mooly. Mooly. Oh man, look at that! What a great like. What a great uh, like! It's already coming together. Oh yes, it is. That's I know amazing. this orange button. It probably isn't the best choice, but <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out a good color for this. Maybe like a coral. So we'll be signing off in a couple minutes. Anything you'd like to end on, wrap up, final note, indication of what we want to do tomorrow? Um, so tomorrow I'm definitely going to try and finish up all of the UI. Um, I've gotten a little bit of a start today, but I would love to finish that up and then put it onto the mobile app and then hopefully prototype the mobile app to tap through the screens and see it would, what it would look like in in real life. Okay, awesome. Anything that you're thinking about, anything that you're excited about, um, just in particular for tomorrow? Um, I'm excited to see how it looks in the end because, to be honest, I haven't gotten, I haven't thought about um, the final product as much as I did the wireframe, so I'll be, I'll be kind of designing in real time for that. Awesome. Yeah. Great. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Stick around for the next segment. We've got Michael Chase and Josh Iwata. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, feedback's a gift, so thanks for sharing. Thanks, guys.